Hello, and welcome back, class number five of Native Food for Life Online. I hope you had a really good week and you found some recipes that you enjoy. And the last challenge of the week was to get more grains. How'd that go for you? If you had some issues or challenges, put them in the chat. Let us know. We'll try to solve uh, if you had any pushback from family or if you just didn't have enough time. Maybe you need more recipes. So be sure to check this week's uh, handouts because there's a lot of good resources in there for finding more recipes. Um, and if you're looking for even more information and support, I do have, I uh, run a Facebook page called Native American Vegans, and I'll put that in the link on the next class if anybody wants to come in and join and see what over uh, 360 other Native American vegans are eating and what we're talking about, uh, you can join on there. Or if you want to search it now, you can do that. So we are going to have uh, a reminder on the, la on the handout. The last page of the handout is a template for setting goals. So you can use that to set goals for the next week and to set your goals from here on out. From, you know, when you don't have the class to hold you up each week and to give you new ideas, you can set your own goals and be creative as you want. So that's a really cool uh, item to look for in the handout. If you're watching these and you're not live, you just found them on the GTV website or you some a link, you found a link to it and you're here, be sure to visit the gtbindians.org under the CHR special uh, diabetes tab and fill out those class surveys for me because I get credit for that and it shows that I'm actually doing the work here and uh, it, it gives us progress and how we can make the program better. Um, if you are, you know, finding this and you need to contact me, it's darylin.berryman at gtb-nsn.gov. And um, you can always call the clinic or call the call the main number at the switchboard and be routed to me, or you can call me directly. I am 231-534-7234. And that comes to my desk here at the office. Um, this is not an official GTB program yet, but we're trying to make it incorporated into there. But they do let me use um, the phone number and the email here so I can, you know, try to reach and be as efficient as I can. So I'll enough about me. We want to turn it over to our registered dietitian, Whitney Brooks. She's from the Seneca Nation, and she's going to introduce today's lessons, which we're calling A Tale of Two Sisters. All right, if you have any questions while the uh, chat, while the movie's going on, you can put them in the chat, uh, and you can email me anytime. All right, here we go. Welcome to Lesson 5 of Native Food for Life. Our topic today, the story of the two sisters. This lesson could also be called, You Are What You Eat. I'm Registered Dietitian Nutritionist Whitney Brooks, a member of the Seneca Nation and your host for today's class. So, I'm glad you are here. Diet change can be difficult, especially when others around you want to stick with old habits. But I can tell you it's totally worth it because you are worth it. Last week's challenge was to eat more grains. I encourage you to eat a whole grain such as oatmeal, brown rice, quinoa, or corn, or any other grain at every meal, five, six, or even seven days a week. How did you do? Did you choose whole grains like whole wheat bread instead of white bread? And along with those grains, I hope you drank lots of water to help with digestion of all that healthy fiber. What is changing for you as you try out more plant-based meals? If you have weight to lose, you should see it come down. Hopefully, you are seeing better blood sugar and blood pressure. Just a quick reminder, if you've been doing the weekly challenges every week and eating more plants and less animals, and you take medication that can lower your blood sugar or blood pressure, Please be careful. These medications can become too strong with a diet change. Check in with your health care provider if you are not feeling well, or if you see your blood sugar or blood pressure are getting too low. I want everyone in this program to be successful and safe. So two sisters and two recipes. By the end of this session, you will be able to 
Describe what happens to your food after you swallow it. So this picture shows our internal organs with their names in English and Diné. So understanding digestion can also help us understand the power of food to help or to hurt. Today's lesson is about our anatomy and physiology, taught in a way you've never seen before. Then we'll meet a woman from the Navajo Nation who tells us about her transformation. And we'll travel to a kitchen to see how to put together a meal that the whole family will love. But first, here is the story of the two sisters. Chuli and Manolita are sisters. They live together and support each other in their lives and their jobs. They even work on opposite ends of the same building. Hey, Chuli. I thought I would make us fry bread and eggs for breakfast. Thanks, but I gotta go to work early today. And I already made some blue corn mush last night. Okay then, I'm going to eat a donut. Today is one of those days where it feels like they're on the opposite side of the world. While Chuli is hard at work, so is her breakfast of blue corn mush. When Chuli swallows her breakfast, it travels down her esophagus into her stomach. There, her stomach churns and acid breaks the food down into smaller pieces. By mid-morning, breakfast has traveled from the stomach to Chuli's small intestine. Healthy vitamins and minerals are released. The small intestine soaks up all these nutrients, sugars, the building blocks of carbohydrate, amino acids, the building blocks of protein from the corn, the little bit of fat in corn, and most of the vitamins, minerals, and healthy boosting phytochemicals. The fiber from the corn is not absorbed. Instead, fiber is a hard worker. It slows the absorption of sugar into the blood. This keeps blood sugar steady and provides a constant source of energy. The pancreas acts as a helper. As food enters the small intestine, the pancreas makes insulin and puts it in the blood. Insulin helps blood sugar from getting too high. Chuli's low-fat, plant-based breakfast helps insulin work at its best. Manolita's donut is not working as hard for her. Just like for Chuli, Manolita's breakfast travels down the esophagus into her stomach. Unfortunately, her donut was made of frying oil and simple carbs, white flour and sugar. So that's what passed into the small intestine. In the small intestine, the junk food carbs from Melita's donut are rapidly absorbed because they have no fiber. This makes Melita's blood sugar spike. Her pancreas responds by sending out a spike of insulin. Her blood sugar dips. By lunchtime, only a little bit of Choi's breakfast is left. These leftovers move into the large intestine where more are absorbed. The fiber from her breakfast keeps Chuli regular and makes it easier for her to go. It's not quite as easy for a banalita. Can I get a bean burrito? Hold the cheese, a salad, salsa, guacamole. Make it two bean burritos. 
I'll have one for later. I'm starving. Can I get one of the bacon, cheese, egg biscuit, an order of fried chicken, and a carton of milk? That's healthy, right? Julie's bean burrito has given her steady fuel, and the beans and veggies are rich in protein, iron, fiber. Mm. Manolita, not used to so much fast food, is having a queasy afternoon. The grease in the bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit is absorbed and literally makes her blood thicker, making it harder for her heart to pump blood. That makes her feel sluggish. All the fat in her meat keeps her insulin from working as well as it should. Studies have shown that eggs and meat can increase insulin resistance. So her body has a harder time keeping blood sugar normal. With regular meals like this, Manolita raises her risk of developing diabetes. We need lots of fiber for good digestion. Only plant foods have fiber. Her lunch of animal products has no fiber. Manolita gets bloated and constipated. Come back later. What? Geez, I can't call my sister to see how she's doing. Sorry, I'm having a bad day. I feel blah. Nothing's going right for me today. Oh, I'll tell you what. I'm cooking tonight and I'll make us some chili with beans and veggies. And no fry, fry bread. It'll give us a good start for tomorrow. That sounds good. I'll see you soon. Too soon? No. Oh, more blue corn mush? Breakfast tomorrow for both of us. And I'm going to pack some extra chili for lunch for both of us. You're a good sister. I know I am. So let's review. Know your anatomy. Can you answer this question? What are the three organs that food passes through after you swallow it? If you said esophagus, stomach, and intestines, you are correct. Plant foods keep our insides happy and healthy. This picture shows the organs inside our body that digest or break down the food that we eat. Beans and other plant foods are loaded with nutrients that keep our insides happy, healthy, and functioning well. Let's review. What are some of the things that high fiber plant foods like blue corn, bean burritos, chili, and no fry fry bread do for chuli? These foods do so much. They prevent constipation, provide steady energy all day, help, and help her feel full. They also lower cholesterol, promote healthy gut bugs or gut flora, and help control blood sugar. I love the way the sisters in this video care for each other. Sharing healthy food is a good way to show your love. Next, let me introduce you to Tara Oliver from the Navajo Nation. Tara signed up for a four-week plant-based healthy eating challenge at the hospital she works at in Fort Defiance, Arizona. The results of that program changed her life and the future of her whole family. This is a 10-minute presentation that she gave to inspire her co-workers who signed up for the challenge a year later. She also gave this talk for a webinar called Cooking to Combat COVID-19 which I'll link to at the end. And this recording was also shown at the Association of Diabetes Care and Education Specialists. 
I'm happy to introduce Tara to you now. Okay, so my name is Tara Oliver, and I um, live here in Wind Rock, Arizona. Uh, my clans are Kiani Nishle, Tatni Zatni Bashashin, Totsorni Bashche, with Atni Dashanelli. Like I said, I live here in um, Wind Rock. I, go to, uh, I work at the Seattle Medical Center. Um, and I'm going to give you a story of um, my, uh, I guess, my husband and I's. Um, success story. So let's see, let me do the share screen. Here is um, plant-based and vegan for a year. Um, go ahead and go. Uh -oh. Sorry guys. Okay, um, so how we started. Um, I was actually one of April April's participants in her um, plant-based challenge. Um, so how we started was um, back in January 2019, um, April James, um, she was on earlier. Um, she's the Director of Nutritional Services at TMC, um, sorry, Sehatsa Medical Center. And um, her department put together like a plant-based challenge for the employees where they provided plant-based breakfasts and lunches. Um, we had weekly support groups. Um, we met and we did cooking demos. It was really, really cool. So um, from day one, it was a four week program. Um, from day one, um, my husband joined me and we ate plant-based every day for four weeks. So um, let's see, uh, we were vegan for the rest of the year. So um, after the four weeks was over, we just kept going with it. Um, and now we are currently trying to go back to plant-based, um, you know, eating more plants, more fresh foods and cutting out all the, um, you know, the fast foods, the oils or like um, Beyond Burgers and Impossible Meat. Um, we call it vegan, vegan junk food. <laughs> um, so, let's see. Uh oh, sorry guys. Okay, so challenges. Um, challenges we had um, were that sometimes when we waited too long, um, we would get hangry, um, you know, we get all irritable. Um, so we always kept snacks around whenever we traveled, uh, whenever we were, we had to wait anywhere. And, um, you know, snacks like mixed nuts, dried fruits, cut fruits, frozen fruits, um, veggies and hummus. So like Karen, <clears throat> Carrie said that about, uh, Carolyn said about the hummus is a really good like um gives flavor to all the veggies veggie dips um, another favorite we like is blue corn chips and guacamole um, so if you notice a lot of these need to be refrigerated um, because they're still fresh so we carried around a little um, a little cooler whenever we traveled um, next thing was um giving up meat so um meat and cheese was out of the out of the picture. So meat wasn't so hard, but the cheese was. Um, while I was plant-based, I tried to find so many um, cheese substitutes. And there were so many, you know, there's like cashew cheese, there's potato cheese. Um, there's all kinds of cheese recipes that you can make from just um, vegetables. And another challenge was I never liked beans. I never ever liked beans. My mom loved beans. So she's always, you know, making bean soups and beans, this is not. Um, Cause I always thought, you know, it's gonna get me gassy. There's no flavor um, or I just didn't know how to cook it. Um, but that changed after that, after going plant-based. Um, I love beans. I really, really love beans now. Um, I love black beans, kidney, garbanzo, lentils, white beans. Um, I eventually did learn how to cook them um, in an instant pot. Um, another challenge was that I was always defending myself for not eating meat. So a lot of the times we get things that are like, um, you know, how do you get your protein? Um, what are you going to eat to survive? You know, that those kind of things. Um, so I joined Instagram and Facebook support pages for plant-based eaters, first-time plant-based eaters um, for support and memes and rants and so on. So. Whenever someone has something to say, um, you will get that. You'll get a lot of um, kind of taunting for it. Um, um, at least, you know, you have a place to go and talk about it. Um, and then another challenge was I had no idea what to make. Um, when people say plant-based, I thought, 
great, we're gonna live on salads now. <laughs> That's actually not true. Um, I YouTubed a lot of our um, dinners and, oh, sorry, dinners and meals. Um, I typed in easy vegan meals, easy plant-based meals. Um, then eventually I used, um, I typed in, you know, instant pot recipes, slow cooker, stove top. And now we're experimenting with different Asian and Indian foods because they use a lot of vegetables we don't normally use and um, a lot of spices. Spices are key for when you wanna um, dress up those plain veggies sometimes. So, um, next slide. So um, this is actually all plant-based vegan food. So as you can see, there are options. It's not just salads and raw veggies. Um, there are tons of ways to um, make your meals. So um, let's say like A, if you look at letter A, it's uh, kind of like a blended fruit smoothie with bananas and blueberries on top. That's really good to have in the morning. My easiest thing is to make is letter B, which is um, toast, avocado, you just split up the avocado, put some um, like chili powder on it with cut up Roma tomatoes and um, mushrooms, grilled mushrooms, super easy. And then C is a pizza, you, oh, I love pizza. Um, I love pizza, it's just sauce and then a bunch of veggies. Um, and then let's see, um, letter, letter K is a really good um, bean soup that my mom made. It's really, really good. Um, a lot of like zucchini and um, avocado, cilantro. It's really, really good. Um, and then letter H is um, a breakfast burrito. So as you can see, there's beans, there's um, bell peppers, there's probably onions and mushrooms in there somewhere. And then those little like bricks, those are tofu. Um, tofu can go a long way because um, it has a lot of different, um, you can make it taste like anything really. So um, we use a lot of tofu in our food. So those are just a lot of ways that you can make vegan or plant-based food. It doesn't have to be salad. Okay, um, so benefits. We started running um, at Just Move It's for the first time last summer. We completed 10 and each one was um, running a 5K. So that was something we never did before and we absolutely loved it. So I had to record like every, every race that we ran because I was so proud of us. <laughs> Um, then we eventually started um, a garden and planted fruit trees in front of our house. So here my husband um, made some raised garden beds. Um, the kids helped out a whole lot, which was really great. Um, great way to grow your own plants. Then we started doing um, spinach and broccoli. Those were really easy to make and they were really pretty easy to harvest um, right after the other. So the, and then we also had a, um, a tiny, tiny like bed of corn. So the cool thing about the corn, growing your own corn is um, it produces the corn pollen. We were able to collect that every morning and eventually um, got ourselves a little bit of um, corn pollen, which was really cool. And just some of the harvests here and there, some of the corn that we had to pick before we um, took on the garden last fall. It was really, really fun and the kids really loved it. So um, the many benefits that we gained from being um, plant-based is um, our A1Cs dropped. Um, we kind of were borderline like 6.4 and um, we have dropped all the way down to like 5.1 by like mid-year. Um, my skin really cleared up because I used to have a lot of that inflammation um, and acne and it just completely cleared up. So now I don't wear it and I don't wear makeup. Um, yeah, um, and then my husband Donovan can now sleep without his CPAP. So a CPAP is like a sleeping machine um, that helps you breathe. Um, now he doesn't need it, which is really great. Um, of course, we lost weight. Um, I lost about 15 pounds and then Donovan lost the most weight. Uh, he lost about 35 pounds. And um, our kids, the kids really, really love drinking almond milk. So um, we were able to get them off um, regular milk and lactate milk so now they only drink all the milk which is great because now we all drink the same milk <laughs> and they also love to eat um, tofu and different veggies which really really surprised me so some of them like broccoli um, string beans carrots um, it's really awesome I'm glad that they love it I really love this video and it was so great to watch Tara's presentation I think it is absolutely amazing that she and her whole family kept up with plant-based eating even after the work program ended. Mostly, 
I'm inspired by the real improvements that Tara and her husband made with their numbers. Lower A1Cs, lower blood pressures, and body weight improvements were just natural results of changing to plant-based eating. I loved how Tara shared her struggles and solutions with making a diet change. To make this shift in eating work for her and her family, she did what works for making any type of change. Tara sought out solutions, looked for ways to feel supported with her change, like finding encouragement and good comebacks on social media, and she adapted as she went along. Nice job, Tara. Let's get cooking. Now, it's my pleasure to bring back Chef Lois Ellen Frank and to introduce you to Chef Walter Whitewater, who will show you how to make a meal that truly Manuelito and Tara and her whole family would all enjoy. Hi, my name is Walter Whitewater. My clan is Kinshichit in Shlong, Tohan, Bashishin, Katapaha, Dashichit, Hodichit, Nidashinale. And here is Lois that we're going to be cooking together. Hi, my name is Lois Ellen Frank, and I am a chef at Red Mesa Cuisine in Santa Fe, New Mexico, with Walter Whitewater. And today we are going to be doing a recipe from the First Lady of the Navajo Nation. And so we're really honored to do this mm -hmm. and you're gonna love this, it's great. We're gonna start with some bread. We're gonna make no fry fry bread today. So Chef Walter's gonna do that. And a uh, very easy dough recipe. We want that dough to rise a little bit just because uh, we it has baking powder in it. Yes. So let's go ahead and we have uh, some flour. We have a little baking powder, tiny bit of salt, and we're using warm water and we're just gonna make that dough and mix it together so that it is uh, ready to go. This recipe has lots of vegetables. Uh, we're using just a, a water-based soup. We're gonna show you all these vegetables. It's so nutritious and so delicious. We think you're gonna love it, right? It's gonna be yeah. great, a big hit on the Navajo Nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why don't you just tell everybody what you're doing a little bit here? I'm just gonna add some um, warm water to make it softer. And sometimes you have to kind of like add a little bit more water when it gets dry like this. So the more you work with it, you want your dough to turn soft, but mostly it's just by, by feeling. Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna show you guys how to grill this. It's gonna be really nice. Um, and we just want that dough to just to rise a little bit while we, we do the soup. And Walter's gotten really good at making dough, haven't you? Yeah. It took me quite a year to, to get there. <laughs> but you're good. I still have a lot of um, competition. And then that's just gonna uh, rise a little bit, right? Yeah. And sometimes it gets really um, gummy-like, you know, like as I'm working with. Just, you know, we add just a, li a, a little bit of flour. That's good, that's good. For me, I love to do on the board and that's what works for me. You go by what works for you. Let it turn softly and then I put it away. All right. So that's gonna, that gonna go in here. Put that in here and we'll let it rise. Yeah. Great. All right. So the next thing we're gonna do, Chef Walter's gonna show you how to cut an onion. You'll notice we have a, a half an onion here. Take the, the skins off, you know, the, the top part, and then move that to the side. So there's a safety that goes, it goes along with it. So what I do is I have my knuckles out like this and then just kind of as I go. And it just depends on how big of a dice that you want. You, you slice it, it can be wider or less than that. And then as Walter cuts the rest of the vegetables, I am going to start to saute, but we don't want to use a lot of oil for this. So we're just going to gently use a little bit of uh, olive oil spray on the mm -hmm. bottom, and then we're going to start to saute our vegetables. So the first thing we're going to saute uh, is the onion, and then Chef Walter's going to show you guys how to cut carrot and celery. Again, very healthy, right? These have lots of vitamins, lots of mineral, lots of fiber. So this is very healthy. So I'll start to saute the onion. 
So what I need to do is take the, the bottom and the top part out and move it. And so this is going to be just a, a small dice. It depends on um, on the carrot that you get. Sometimes they're like a little wider. So just be careful. Make sure you always have your knuckle out like this. And uh, so that way you don't cut your, um, your fingers off. So. And this recipe has uh, pasta. So um, we're using bow ties today. And you're going to cook your pasta as per the instructions on the bag. Uh, bow tie, you could use what? Elbow, you could use penne. Uh, a lot of minestrone has penne, but we want to go ahead and we're going to, uh, we cooked um, the bow tie pasta today. The same thing with the salaries. A lot of people, they, they, they'll make, it depends how you want it, you know. For me, I love to have my you like size. small? Yes, and small and or you can go do a um, half moon if you want. Great. I'm just going to get a little spoon here so we can stir this. Excellent. And we love to eat our vegetables. So we want to encourage you guys to eat lots of vegetables and plants. Uh, they're very, very healthy. Uh, lots of nutrients, lots of fiber, and inexpensive, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got carrot and celery. That's going to uh, be the next thing. What are you going to cut next? This. Great. Cut it in half. A lot of time, um, for me, I always love to take the, the inside out. But for this um, um, dish, I want to leave it on and then just cut in half and just do a half moon um, Cut the, That'll be nice. Yeah, the half, so. Excellent. So we've got our onions going. Look at that. Beautiful. And then we're going to add our carrots and our celery. And look at these beautiful half moons. That's the zucchini for the beautiful soup today. And uh, the reason that we want to saute the vegetables is because uh, it's going to give them flavor, but it's also going to make them uh, soft, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to go ahead and uh, just start to cook those vegetables. Um, and here's some garlic here. What I do is I s smash them like this. And then it's, it's quicker when you, when you work with it. Or sometimes I, I, I roast the, uh, the garlic, you know? That um, you put extra flavor into it, and some when you do it raw, it tastes you taste more um, garlic, it's a little stronger too. So, do you want to add all that garlic or just some of that garlic? Um, add... It just depends. When you look at it, okay, yeah, I'm gonna use all of it. So. Okay, great. So. All right, and uh, let's talk about some of the other ingredients we're gonna be using today. Uh, we're gonna be using pinto beans and kidney beans. And uh, these are canned, but you, you can certainly cook beans uh, from scratch, right, Chef Walter? Yes. And we're using a can of diced tomato. And one of the secret ingredients, uh, frozen spinach. So uh, this is going to be really good. And uh, it's going to add flavor, but it also is a, a little bit of a twist, right? Mm. Look at that. Mm -hmm. mm. Smell yeah. nice. So you can start to see the vegetables are cooking. And uh, then, uh, Chef Walters, we've got some uh, frozen corn, right? That's yes. going to also add some flavor. And then some herbs. So let's talk about the herbs. And you know, if you can't get fresh herbs, it's perfectly okay, right? Mm -hmm. So let's show this is oregano. We have a little garden box that we're growing fresh oregano, and the other fresh herb that we're using today is basil. So Chef Walter's going to show you uh, how to cut that and how to take the leaves uh, off the oregano, right? So what I usually do is um, get the stem and down forward like that. So other than that, it, you'll get tears. Okay. Beautiful. So all these foods add nutrients, fiber, flavor, 
Uh, and we want everyone to be healthy, right? Mm -hmm. And what is a, a, one of the sayings we say in our kitchen? Food is our medicine, right? Yeah. And um, what's fascinating is uh, you said when you were growing up that there were wild versions of this. Will you talk just a little bit about uh, some of the wild um, foods that you used to harvest? Well, um, during like around, oh, around February, we called them, uh, um, the translation would be the, like a wild carrot. So there would be like more like a white. Anyway, um, so replacing that, we just put yellow um, carrots in. And that's what I, um, that I grew up with. And, um, wild carrots? Yeah. Any wild celery? There is wild celery yeah, that they, Native people harvest and yeah, uh, wild onions. Yeah. And we grow wild onions uh, and they love to just spread everywhere. They're beautiful and they have lots and lots uh, of flavor, right? Mm -hmm. So you can hear this great sound, all these vegetables just starting to cook nicely. Uh, and if you didn't want to do half moons uh, with the zucchini, you could cut smaller. We like some big vegetables in there, right, for yeah. this soup? Yeah. So let's go ahead and add uh, our tomatoes and just any can uh, of diced tomatoes, right? This yes. is just a can of diced tomatoes. So let's go ahead and add that, give that a stir. And um, then the next thing we'll add is the corn, the frozen corn. And frozen corn is easy to get. Uh, you could also use fresh corn if you had it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we're gonna go ahead and add that next. Give that a stir. Ooh, it's starting to look good, isn't it? Yeah. The color is beautiful, you know? That's it is the, beautiful, huh? You want make sure you want your colors in there. You know, that's the Look at that. And always call like, you know, as as a native, as they always say, where's the meat? I always say, right here. Yeah, that's in the where vegetable. the meat is in the vegetable. That's your meat. I was like, then I say, oh. So the next thing we'll add is the spinach. Yeah, We're gonna let this uh, soup cook for about 10 minutes. And then we're going to add our water. Oh, look at that. The colors, right? Just gorgeous. So the next thing we're going to do, and we have some dough that we've already uh, let rise this morning, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to take uh, our dough and Chef Walter's going to roll it out. Oh, look at his rolling pin. That's his favorite thing to do. Uh, I'm going to move this and I'm going to bring over the grill. Let's just get this. Perfect. And we're going to grill the breads, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk a little bit about what you're doing. So we have a basket here and the basket has some, uh, some bread already cooked in it, right? Mm -hmm. um, you're gonna love this bread. And uh, this bread, uh, it's not fried, right? But mm -hmm. it's the same dough for fry bread. And why would we not want to fry it, Chef Walter? Because we're not using oil. We don't want the lard, right? Uh -huh. We don't want that fat. Uh, we want to be trim and healthy and, right? And have something that uh, is nice and delicious. So there is some of our bread that's done. And usually this is a two person operation, right? Yeah. One person can be cooking and one person can be rolling out the dough. So we'll show you how to roll out uh, some of that dough. Nice. And some people might not even want to use a rolling pin, right? Ooh. Yeah, they want to use your hands. I haven't gotten there yet. So uh, this is the, almost. My, my way is... Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, while this one's cooking, uh, Chef Walter's going to roll out one more. And so you take about a ball, how big is that? Like, it just depends on, on your flame, but that uh, kind of made it a little big. Yeah. So, we always try to keep, keep it covered, you know. For me, um, it, it dries up. So, I would try to keep it, and then put some more flour down. What I did, you, you seen earlier, um, it was kind of a little like, still a little wet like the, the flour. And that's, for me, that when I add a little bit more like this, so it's not tough. It's nice and soft that you can work That's right. a nice piece. So, so you can do it with your hands too, but rolling pin will help you uh, make it a little larger. Yeah. yeah. 
And then the bread is just going to puff like it normally would, right? Like mm -hmm. you're fine. You can actually see, look at those beautiful uh, grill marks on that. And uh, it's just a great uh, bread. It puffs up just like the fry bread. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oh, you're going to love this bread, especially when it's warm, right? It's yeah. just really, really uh, nice. Look at that. You can see the bubbles. Yeah. And if you didn't have an open flame like this, what could you could do it in a cast iron pan, mm -hmm. right? Let's do one more bread we'll show you guys. Then we're going to go back to our stew. And look at those. See the bubbles starting? Those bubbles uh, are telling you when, when you're going to flip it over. Look, just like it's frying, mm -hmm. right? Look at the beautiful bubbles. Let's flip this over. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Nice. So... Uh, we're definitely going to have some delicious bread uh, for our, our stew. And uh, next thing we're going to add is our beans. And we have kidney beans and pinto beans, two kinds of beans. And uh, beans are uh, amazing, you guys. So beans are low in fat, right? Mm -hmm. High in protein. They have lots of vitamins, lots of nutrients. And uh, let's add our water. And you can see we're just using water. And so uh, we're gonna bring this to a boil here. Oops. And uh, let me just finish the bread. Look at that piece of bread. It's gorgeous. All right. So the next thing, yep, we're gonna add Chef Walter is our herbs. Here you go. And so what are we adding? basil, oregano, and then we're going to do a little salt and pepper, right? Mm -hmm. mm, look at that. The reason why we, um, we put herbs at the end is like, other than that, if you do it from the beginning, that's all you're going to taste. You're going to lose the flavor on the squash, on the beans, and, and, and others, that you, whatever it is that you put in there and you lose that flavor. Mm -hmm. All you're gonna taste is just the herbs at the end. And then some salt. Yeah. Stir that in and a little bit of uh, black pepper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mmm. <clears throat> and then the only last thing we're gonna do is we're going to add our pasta. We're gonna show everybody uh, how to plate this, right? Mm -hmm. Now we don't like our vegetables overcooked, no. do we? So you just wanna cook those vegetables until they're soft. And then the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna show everybody, we cooked some beautiful bow tie pasta, um, which we cooked in advance. And we don't like to add the pasta to the soup because what happens? It gets it's overcooked, yeah. right? So what we like to do is just cook the pasta and, and drain it, right? Mm -hmm. Let's stop, pull water so we stop the cooking. And then we can put the pasta in the bowl and pour the soup on top of it. So I love pasta. You don't like pasta as much, right? So you're gonna do a little less. And we cooked a couple of cups, so we want uh, several cups of cooked pasta. All right. And uh, should we spoon a little of this sure. delicious soup on top? And then we have some amazing uh, um, flat leaf parsley from uh, our little window box garden, right? And some, ooh, look at that, yummy, beautiful. Some of that broth, look at all those vegetables in there. Really, really nice. How's that? Look at that. So this is a complete, a uh, twist on minestrone soup, right? Mm -hmm. And we've got uh, our vegetables in there and uh, it's beautiful. Do you, oh, I'm gonna add a little more broth to that. Mm -hmm. How does that look? So you're just gonna do, oh, look at that serving. You guys are gonna love this, right? We can put that, and what are we gonna do? Let's cut a bread and we can serve some of that great uh, warm bread uh, with this. And um, you're gonna do four pieces. Nice, so that's one piece. There's the no fry fry bread. Yummy. Woohoo! Is. That is a gorgeous plate. Look at that, you guys. We made a really healthy soup 
uh, based on the First Lady of the Navajo Nation's recipe, which we're so honored that she shared with us. Yes. And uh, we want all of you to, to cook this at home. We want you all to be healthy and well. That's our wish and our goal for all of you. And we just wanna thank our sponsors today, uh, the Physicians Committee and Sunlight Financial uh, for helping make this video possible. And it's been so much fun cooking with you, Chef Walter. And uh, we hope that uh, you will all learn how to cook some great food and stay tuned for any future uh, episodes. And um, you wanna say a couple of closing words? I just wanna say it's less money and instead of um, buying meat and all that, it gets ex expensive. This, not only that, this is the, the healthier way to eat board and to, and to eat and stay healthy. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you in the future. That was a great video. Watching Chef Lois and Chef Walter cooking together inspired several ideas in me. Here's a summary of my commentary. So first, it was an easy recipe. All of those ingredients are low cost and can be prepped ahead of time to make cooking really quick. That will come in handy when you and your family are really hungry and you want to avoid eating out. You can make a big batch of this. So this was a great recipe for batch cooking. Minus the pasta, this soup will freeze really well. Just cook a new portion of pasta when you want to thaw out your frozen soup to enjoy at another time. This recipe was also low on salt, big on flavor. So I noticed that this soup used very little salt for that big pot, but it was loaded with aromatics and very savory vegetables and fresh herbs. So pasta options. You can use any type of pasta for this recipe, as Chef Lois mentioned. Bowtie pasta was used in this video, but you could also make this soup even more filling than it already is with whole wheat pasta. Look for different whole wheat shapes the next time you're out grocery shopping. So lastly, I can report from my own experience that you will not miss cleaning up all the oil spatter and mess from frying the bread. Grilling actually adds more flavor anyways. So that sums up my video reflections. And now for our take home points. One, feed your body whole foods to feel good all day, every day. We saw how it made a difference for Chuli and Manuelito in the two sisters. Two, Tara Oliver showed us that four weeks of eating this way got her and her family on a new path that has stuck now for more than two years. Three, Try out a soup recipe that's a favorite of Mrs. Fafili Inez, the First Lady of the Navajo Nation, and serve it with some homemade no-fry fry bread. Now it's time for our challenge of the week. So this week's challenge is to drink water. We've been focusing on eating foods on the native power plate, beans, grains, whole fruits, and whole vegetables. What do we drink with these health-promoting foods? The answer? Water. This week, make sure that water is your beverage of choice. It's the natural choice. Here's some benefits of water. Water hydrates us, which makes us feel energized and satiated. So water is also the perfect aid for digesting and absorbing all the nutrients in our food. Water also helps push everything through our digestive systems so that it functions the way it should. That means it keeps everything flowing. Here's some tips. Put a full glass next to your bed and drink it as soon as you wake up in the morning. Enjoy a glass of water with every meal and in between meals. Older people should know that as we get older, we don't always get the signal of thirst. So don't wait until you are thirsty. For everyone, it's a good idea to have a reusable water bottle with you. Try to fill it and empty it completely twice every day. Here's a good challenge for the week. If you are a soda pop or energy drink drinker, set these aside for the week. After a few days, I promise you won't miss them. Coffee and tea are fine, but the caffeine in these can be dehydrating, so just keep an eye on that. Focus on drinking plenty of water every day. 
I've got one more task for you. I want to make sure that you remember to take vitamin B12. It was mentioned in earlier classes, but it is worth repeating. Many Americans don't get enough vitamin B12. Lack of vitamin B12 can cause anemia or neuropathy, which is a type of damage to your nerves, or even memory problems. According to the USDA, anyone over the age of 50, no matter what diet they follow, should take B12. Also, anyone who takes the diabetes medicine, metformin, should take B12. And everyone who eats a plant-based diet should absolutely take it. Look for the lowest dose that you can find, which is usually 500 micrograms, and take every other day, or take a 2500 microgram dose once a week, or whatever amount your healthcare professional recommends. A bottle of vitamin B12 is not expensive, and it's worth every penny. All right, see you next week. Thank you so much for joining me. Come back next week for more easy and health-promoting meal ideas. At our next class, we'll celebrate your progress with a potluck. It's a Zoom potluck, but I can't wait for you to see what my group brings. Tips and recipes will be shared. All right, see you soon. Okay, any questions or comments? You can put them in the chat. And today we met Tara and how she had her whole food plant-based journey. And in the handouts, you'll see the four-week employee challenge that they did and some of the recipes that are at the hospital, uh, at the cafeteria. So that's a, a really nice thing in the handouts. Look for that. And to, to this week's challenge is drink more water. And if you already drink enough water, how can you get more water in you? And so that was, I was just in the chat and you can church it up, spark it up with a little lemon, some citrus. Sometimes I put lemon, orange, and lime in there just to give it all, you know, a little bit more appeal and you want to get that water down. Another tip, don't know if y'all are coffee drinkers, but if you do drink coffee, and, you know, coffee can is a diuretic and can, you know, make you, you use up your water stores. So first thing in the morning, I drink water and uh, maybe it's too much information, but I go, you know, number one, go to the bathroom at least once or twice while I'm drinking water in the morning before I'm going to start that coffee. And sometimes, you know, it's 8.30, 9.30 before I'm like, okay, I feel like I'm fully hydrated. Now I can take on my coffee, you know, mug for the day without it dehydrating me and all my work is gone because in the morning, you know, I didn't drink enough water before I started that diuretic. So be sure to drink, you know, your water before coffee, water in the morning. And if you have ever visited the dental clinic that uh, our hygienist recommends drink a cup, you know, drink a sip of water, or, I mean, coffee, and then follow it with water so you don't stain your teeth. So that's another way to get in more water and also keep your teeth from getting coffee stained or any kind of dark drink or blueberries or anything that has those staining properties to your teeth. Always think about that to get more water in. B12. I thought, you know, maybe I wouldn't need B12 because if you have fortified cereals and you drink fortified um, drinks, you know, you get B12 and B12 does store in your body so it can last a while. But when I took this challenge, I started taking the B12 and it is amazing. I slept so much better and I think it is because of the B12. And there wasn't like multiple trips to the bathroom at night. You do produce a hormone that keeps you from, you know, having the urge to go to the bathroom. So you get a full night's sleep and B12 can affect that. And so you can get a full night's sleep and not have to be up and down all night. Try to take that B12. But it is, if you're a patient at the clinic, you can ask for it here. And if you feel comfortable setting, uh, you know, telling us what you have uh, set in mind for a goal for this week for Having more water, put it in the chat. Let us know. Maybe we can help other folks out. So the B12, you can get all kinds of different kinds of B12s. There's some that are from mushrooms, and you just want to make sure that you get just the lowest amount. The one we have here is only 125 micrograms. She was showing like a 500 one, but you can take that little 125 too. Um, 
but any type, just a low amount, any type of B12 will work. It usually, it is a vegan derivative and B12 can also be found in fermented foods. So, you know, if you have a high intake of, you know, tamari or soy sauce or tempeh, the B12 is found on those. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if you have it in your multivitamin, you might want to check on the back of the multivitamin to see how many micrograms is in there. So, you know, you're getting at least um, the 100, uh, 125 a day or the 2,500 for the week because it does store up. So you can take it at the once a week or you can take the small increments every day. And it is, um, so it's, she said 2,500 for the week, but actually, you know what? My little 125s here, she said we would have to take three of those. So she's wanting you to do 500 a day um, or 2,500 for the week. Uh, and that's micrograms, the MCG. Okay. All right. Oh. We, we do have a couple folks that are taking the class that, that are watching the videos. So I appreciate you having the chat with a live interaction. And so when they ask me questions, I can be like, oh yeah, we had that question in class. Uh, I'm prepared for it. And if you know someone that wants to do that 30 day challenge with the Veg Michigan food, you can pass that uh, link to them and have them sign up for the uh, December 19th food pickup. And next week we'll go over graduation and what name you want on your certificate. And on the 19th, we'll pick up the Native Food for Life bags and your Veg Michigan bags and your uh, graduation certificate. They're really colorful, they're really cool. Um, so I guess that's it for now. I just wanna wish y'all good luck with the water. They say, put it right next to your bed before you go to sleep, you know, a water bottle or a covered water. And then, you know, so as soon as you wake up, uh, you can drink that. And there are studies that say it helps clean out your lymph nodes and get your stomach ready for the day. And it's just an overall good thing to do for your body. It is the pre-colonial drink. That's what we used to drink was water. All right. Well, I appreciate you all tuning in tonight. And we'll see you next week. Email me or call or send a message, however you know how you can get a hold of me. And we'll try to get it answered uh, as soon as you can. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll get you flyers and everything we need so we can share. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I'm down to the page. It has the pledge. Um, says they're going to keep their water bottle with you every week. And I don't know if you know this, but all through GTB offices, they did away with those cups because they wanted us to bring your water bottle. So bring your water bottle, fill it up, and... We'll see you next week. Until then, you guys, bum a pee.